Today on HC Daily, we're talking about dreams, we're talking about astrologers and magicians and all kinds of crazy things, and then God stepping in, declaring he's the God of the universe who establishes all the kings of the world. So that's what we're talking about today on HC Daily. You're listening to another episode of HC Daily, a daily devotional podcast that you can listen to at home or on the go. We believe that you can grow as much as you want to grow spiritually, and this podcast can be a part of your daily growth plan. So, whether you're watching on YouTube, listening on Spotify, or your favorite podcast app, we're glad you're here. Now, let's join our hosts, Jeff Forrester and Chris Zarbaugh in the studio. Okay, Wesley, it's good to have you back in yeah, the studio today. Good to be here again. Man alive, this is going to be all week long. We have the privilege of really classing up this podcast yeah. <laughs> by having Wesley Woods on here with us. And so uh, it's our tradition. We love to ask interview questions. And since uh, 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 I have the microphone right now, I'm going to yeah. ask the questions. <laughs> so, Wesley, uh, tell us a little bit about your life. Where did you grow up? And then what did you want to be when you grew up? Oh, that's a tough one. So the easy part is I grew up in Detroit. Yeah, um, I was going to say, that's a tough one. You yeah. don't know where you grew up? <laughs> <laughs> so grew up in Detroit on the east side. When that's I, why you look so tough. Yeah. Right? That's why you're <laughs> yeah. so tough. You grew up on the mean streets yeah. of Detroit. But what did I want to be when I grew up? That's mm -hmm. a You know what? I think the one thing that I did want to uh, do was play basketball. Oh, really? That's the thing that I wanted to do. Yeah. And then I quickly realized there was another skill level you needed for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. that well, dream I've, went to the wind. I've seen you take a few shots. You've got <laughs> yeah. a pretty shot, man. Yeah, not yeah. quite like LeBron. All right. Well, hey, uh, keep practicing. Maybe, yeah. maybe if the ministry <laughs> one, doesn't work out one for One day you. I'll achieve my dream. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give up, Wesley. You can be anything you want to be. <laughs> That's, that, we're changing. That's going to be the new uh, thing for today. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. So then uh, last question, uh, what superhero did you want to be? superhero or 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 uh character cartoon character kind of whatever see i used to think batman was cool uh -huh. because of the belt oh yeah like whatever he needed was on that belt mm -hmm. like in any situation he would just grab it off the belt and it saved him so. i agree with you on that no. i thought i thought batman was the coolest guy no. besides that he had a nice house cool car yeah, yeah he had it all yeah, the batmobile was cool all right <laughs> well we are continuing in this thank you that was very enlightening yeah so, that was good <laughs> uh, we're continuing in our study today on uh, the life of daniel yeah. and this is a real pivotal moment in daniel's life so last uh the last podcast we talked about how he, he chose not to defile himself. He determined not to defile himself and uh, found a win-win solution. And God blessed them and, and gave Daniel and his three friends opportunity. Mm -hmm. But now Daniel, God gives Daniel the opportunity to go way beyond anything that happened in his career prior to that. Yeah. But it's a pretty crazy story that gets us there. So there's a lot of Bible verses here. Uh, I'm just going to read them and I'm going to yeah. let you just jump right into it when I'm done reading, okay? Oops, sounds good. So we're going to read uh, chapter two of the book of Daniel. It says, one night during the second year of his reign, Nebuchadnezzar had such disturbing dreams that he couldn't sleep. He called in his magicians and enchanters, sorcerers and astrologers, and he demanded that they tell him what he had dreamed. As they stood before the king, he said, I, I have had a dream that deeply troubles me and I must know what it means. Then the astrologers answered to the king in Aramaic, long live the king, tell us the dream and we'll tell you what it means. But the king said to the astrologers, I'm serious about this. If you don't tell me what my dream was and what it means, you will be torn limb from limb and your houses will be turned into heaps of rubble. But if you tell me what I dreamed and what the dream means, I will give you many wonderful gifts and honors. Just tell me the dream and what it means. And they said, please, your majesty, tell us the dream and we'll tell you what it means. And the king replied, I know what you're doing. You're stalling for time because you know I am serious when I say, if you don't tell me the dream, you are doomed. So you have conspired to tell me lies, hoping I'll change my mind. But tell me the dream, and then I'll know that you can tell me what it means. The astrologers replied to the king, no one on earth can tell a king his dream. And no king, however great and powerful, has ever asked such a thing of any magician, enchanter, or astrologer. The king's demand is impossible. No one except the gods can tell you your dream, and they don't live here among people. The king was furious when he heard this, and he ordered that all the wise men of Babylon be executed. And because of the king's decree, men were sent to find and kill Daniel and his friends. When Arioch, the commander of the king's guard, came to kill them, Daniel handled the situation with wisdom and discretion. He asked Arioch, 
Why has the king issued such a harsh decree? So Arioch told him all that had happened, and Daniel went at once to see the king, he requested more time to tell the king what the dream meant. Then Daniel went home and told his friends Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah what had happened. He urged them to ask the God of heaven to show them his mercy by telling them a secret, so they would not be executed along with the other wise men of Babylon. That night, the secret was revealed to Daniel in a vision. Then Daniel praised the God of heaven. He said, praise the name of God forever and ever, for he has all wisdom and power. He controls the course of world events. He removes kings and sets up other kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the scholars. He reveals deep and mysterious things and knows what lies hidden in darkness, though he is surrounded by light. I thank and praise you, God of my ancestors, for you have given me wisdom and strength. You've told me what we asked of you. And revealed to us what the king demanded. Then Daniel went in to see Arioch, whom the king had ordered to execute the wise men of Babylon. Daniel said to him, Do not kill these wise men. Take me to the king, and I'll tell him the meaning of his dream. Arioch quickly took Daniel to the king and said, I found one of the captives from Judah who will tell the king the meaning of this dream. The king said to Daniel, also known as Belteshazzar, Is this true? Can you tell me what my dream was and what it means? Daniel replied, there are no wise men, enchanters, magicians, or fortune tellers who can reveal the king's secret, but there is a God in heaven who reveals secrets, and he has shown King Nebuchadnezzar what will happen in the future. Now, I will tell you your dream and the visions that you saw as you lay in your bed. While your majesty was sleeping, you dreamed about coming events, and who reveals secrets has shown you what is going to happen, and it is not because I am wiser than anyone else that I know the secret of your dream, but because God wants you to understand what was in your heart. In your vision, your majesty, you saw standing before you a huge shining statue of a man. It was a frightening sight. The head of the statue was made of fine gold. Its chest and arms were silver. Its belly and thighs were bronze. Its legs were iron, and its feet were a combination of iron and baked clay. As you watched, a rock was cut from a mountain, but not by human hands, and it struck the feet of the iron clay, smashing them to bits. The whole statue was crushed into small pieces of iron, clay, bronze, silver, and gold, and then the wind blew them away without a trace, like chaff on a threshing floor. But the rock that knocked the statue down became a great mountain that covered the whole earth. That was a dream. Now we will tell you, the king, what it means. Your majesty, you are the greatest of kings. The God of heaven has given you sovereignty, power, strength, and honor. He has made you the ruler over all the inhabited world and has put even the wild animals and birds under your control. You are the head of gold. But after your kingdom comes to an end, another kingdom inferior to yours will rise to take your place. After that kingdom has fallen, yet a third kingdom represented by bronze will rise to rule the world. Following that kingdom, there will be a fourth one. As strong as iron, that kingdom will smash and crush all previous empires just as iron smashes and crushes everything it strikes. The feet and toes you saw were a combination of iron and baked clay showing that this kingdom will be divided. Like iron mixed with clay, it'll have some of the strength of iron, but while some parts of it will be as strong as iron, other parts will be weak as clay. This mixture of iron and clay also shows that these kingdoms will try to strengthen themselves by forming alliances with each other through intermarriage, but they will not hold together just as iron and clay do not mix. During the reigns of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed or conquered. It'll crush all these kingdoms in nothingness and it'll stand forever. That is the meaning of the rock cut from the mountain, though not by human hands that crushed to pieces the statue of iron, bronze, clay, silver, and gold. The great God was showing the king what will happen in the future. The dream is true and its meaning is certain. Then King Nebuchadnezzar threw himself down before Daniel and worshipped him, and he commanded his people to offer sacrifices and burn sweet incense before him. And the king said to Daniel, Truly, your God is the greatest of gods, the Lord over kings, a revealer of mysteries, for you've been able to reveal this secret. Then the king appointed Daniel to a high position and gave him many valuable gifts. He made Daniel rule over the whole province of Babylon, as well as chief over all his wise men. At Daniel's request, the king appointed Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to be in charge of all the affairs of the province of Babylon while Daniel remained in the king's court. So, man, that was a long yeah, passage. This is, but it's action-packed. Oh, I mean, man, lots it just doesn't stop. It's crazy, yeah. man. So, <laughs> I want to point out something, Jeff, in verse 14. It says, when um, Arioch, the commander of the king's guard, came to kill them, Daniel handed handled the situation with wisdom and discretion. Yeah. And it's kind of the same thing that you were uh, mentioning uh, in the last podcast. And I love that about Daniel, the fact that you can be godly, you can be right, 
but you don't have to be a jerk about it. Right, right. So I think of that even, someone's watching me right now, and they're, they might be in a, a, a marriage situation where they just feel, I'm right about this. Yeah. I don't know why they can't see I'm right about it, but I'm right about it. But even if you feel that you are right about a certain thing, you can have diplomacy with it. Right. You don't have to be a jerk as you are staking out your position concerning something. Yeah, I mean, it, I think it was very clear from the previous chapter, Daniel and his friends decided, we're not going to blend into their culture. Yeah. Right? We're going to eat our food. We're going to continue to honor God. And so they disagreed with the direction and with the the belief systems of Babylon. Mm -hmm. Um but because of the wisdom and diplomacy, Daniel could disagree without being disagreeable. Yeah. And right? I think that's something that people miss. Can you say that one more time? Yeah, Someone needs to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> Daniel was able to disagree without being disagreeable. Yeah. And, and so he has this great wisdom and this, this discernment. And what, what was that? What was the phrase that said there? Verse 14. Discretion. Yeah. 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 Wisdom so, and discretion. So you never see Daniel backing down. Mm -hmm. You don't see Daniel running from truth. You see him standing right all yeah. the time, but he does it with discretion. Yeah. And he does it in a way that people don't hate him. Yeah. As a matter of fact, you find as we get deeper into this book, th they love him. Yeah. Even though he's so different from them, they love him. And it's because of this. Now, do you remember uh, last week we talked, um, uh, Chris Zarba and I, we talked about uh, the writings of, of Solomon mm -hmm. and how Solomon says the most important thing to get is wisdom. Yeah. Well, here is maybe the best example of a guy who has the wisdom of God, chooses not to compromise the truths of God, and yet is able to apply it in a way that it works out for him in his life, right? So Yeah, no, that's good. And then uh, we're short on time today because we got a lot to pack uh, in here. Yeah, it was a long passage. Um, but verse 28, it says, but there is a God in heaven who reveals secrets. <laughs> and I absolutely love that. The fact that even though we may not know, God knows. Yeah. God has the answer. God has a solution to that very thing that you are dealing with right now. God has the answer, the solution, and the fix to that right now. Yeah. And God will reveal that to us. Yeah, yeah. You might feel like you're trapped in Babylon. You're yeah. completely surrounded by evil and wickedness. And God's way is the right way. Yeah. And God, there is a God in heaven. Yeah. Right? And it, and it may not happen right away. This is a long period of time in Daniel's life. Yeah. We're, we just turned a page. It was yeah. chapter one to chapter two. But um, in, in Daniel's life, this might have been years between yeah. chapter one and chapter two. But he continued to honor God and mm -hmm. he was still convinced. And he was ready to tell Nebuchadnezzar, who, by the way, they were terrified of Nebuchadnezzar. He was yeah. going to tear these people limb for limb for not being able to tell yeah. him the dream he had. He didn't even tell him the dream. And, and that's the funny part about it. It's not just that I want you to interpret the dream. Yeah. No, he wanted them He wanted them to tell him what he dreamed about, yeah. then interpret yeah. it. That's the funny part about and, it. And I'm going to tear you limb for limb. I'm going to tear your houses down if I you mean, don't do it. I mean, wouldn't it be enough just to put them to death? But yeah. no, we're going to tear you limb to limb, you know, and turn your house into rubble. And, and Daniel had confidence that there is a God in heaven. Yeah. And he wasn't shy about going to a, a, a harsh man like Nebuchadnezzar yeah. saying, let me tell you, there is a God in heaven. Right? Then yeah. he deflects... Um, it would have been natural, I think, for him to kind of take credit for his for this yeah. wisdom. But he immediately deflects and he goes back and says, it's not me. Mm -hmm. I'm not wiser than any of the others. It's God, yeah. the king, right? And and so he says, it's the God um, because God wants you to understand what's in your heart. And so then he begins to unpack it. And what he's doing here is he's telling Nebuchadnezzar, listen, the Babylonian uh, kingdom is gold. The extravagance of Babylon was unbelievable. Probably no other kingdom in history was more extravagant. It, it was unbelievably extravagant. Then the Medo-Persian uh, kingdom, which comes in just shortly after this, wipes out Babylon. And they're silver. They're not quite as, as powerful. Um, they're, they're, it's bigger, though. It's a bigger thing, um, kingdom. And the kingdom lasts longer. Silver is more durable than gold, right? Yeah. And then bronze comes. Bronze is even more durable. This is the Greek empire. This is now Alexander the Great was the one who came in and defeated the Medo-Persian uh, uh, kingdom and establishes Greece as the, the great world power. And bronze was a new technology, yeah, right? That was and a then, major shift in technology. And then finally, iron is a whole other thing. And yeah. iron crushes all the other metals, right? Mm -hmm. So then that's the Roman Empire comes in. And then eventually we know from history, the Roman Empire was divided, just like he said it would yeah. be. And so he's predicting 
each of these kingdoms would last longer than the last one. Yeah. That's why they're more durable, mm -hmm. metals and things. And then they become more and more violent to the point that, you know, by the time you get to the Roman thing, they're yeah. killing people for sport and stadiums, right? Yeah. So it's pretty crazy. But then that kingdom does divide. But then what does he say? And this is the cool one, the rock that's cut not by man's hands. Yeah, it, it's talking about in, it says it in a, a couple of places, but um, during the reign of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed or never be conquered. It will crush all the kingdoms into nothingness and will stand forever. That is the meaning of the rock cut from the mountain. So that rock, and, and that rock so is really, human hands, yes, says. that rock is really a foreshadowing of Christ. Oh, right. If you haven't uh, picked, the, picked up on uh, what we're saying here, God's kingdom will never be destroyed. That's right. Yeah. So, so the Bible says that Jesus is the chief cornerstone, mm -hmm. right? Jesus, uh, you know, is the rock that the whole uh, kingdom of God is built on. Yeah. And that's what it's talking about here is that he is going to crush all the kingdoms of the world. You know, I love, and I love to highlight this in the, the Life Application Bible. Yeah. Get a Life Application Study Bible. Yes. It's so useful. But the, the, the note for verse 44 mm -hmm. is so relevant to today. It says, God's kingdom will never be destroyed. If you're upset by threats of war, terrorist attacks, mass shootings, or even the prosperity of evil leaders, remember that God, not any world leader, decides the outcome of history. Under God's protection, his kingdom will never be destroyed. Jesus is coming back and he will make th all things right. He will exact judgment on all who oppose God and those who put their trust in Jesus will be made new to live in him, live with him forever. They are members of his kingdom and are secure in him. What a powerful reminder. But I think, Jeff, that's challenging for some people because they may view um, the government as their source or yeah. as the answer or as the solution, or they may view uh, some other entity as the answer or the source yeah. or the solution, regardless of what you believe, what side of the aisle that you're on. Mm -hmm. We're clearly seeing here that the Bible is telling us that Jesus is the answer and yeah. the source and the solution. Well, Daniel does such a good job of buttering up Nebuchadnezzar. Yeah. Man, you are the greatest of all kings. Yeah. <laughs> and, and he says, even the animals are your subjects, right? Yeah. Even at one point, he says, the God of heaven has given you sovereignty, power, strength, and uh, yeah, he's yeah, really yeah. laying it on thick. Right, right. Yeah. And, and all those things are true. He's yeah. the greatest of all the human kings at the yeah. time. So he's not lying. Yeah. He's just really laying it on thick. <laughs> yeah. And um, uh, But then he is so bold to say, but the God of, of the, all the kingdoms of the world will eventually lay waste to every one of these kingdoms. Not only that, they will be destroyed, driven to dust and blown away. Yeah. These kingdoms will be forgotten. Yeah. Right? And that's it. If you've ever been to Rome and you see, you know, I, I, a couple years ago, I had a long layover in Rome. We were coming back from a long mission trip. And so uh, Pastor Chad and I, we ran around the city for a little while and we went to the Colosseum. Wow, how amazing, 50,000 people. And it's just rubble now. Yeah. Right. And, and then uh, could, could fit in there. The gladiators a fight there and stuff. We went down into the Roman Forum and into the main portion of the, the most powerful city in the world at the time. And even according to this description, the most powerful kingdom up to that time. And it was just rubble. It was yeah. rubble. And they show, oh, you know, Julius Caesar over here. Oh, you know, um, uh, Constantine uh, over here, whatever. And they talk about the things that they built. And we're just looking at broken stuff. Yeah. And this is what he said is every one of these kingdoms, and by the way, every kingdom, subsequent kingdom afterwards, yeah. including our own, will eventually be driven to dust. And nobody's really going to know or remember much yeah. about those things. But what does last is God's kingdom. Yeah. And, and so we don't have to be afraid of what's coming next. We just, he, D Daniel had the guts to tell the king, the hope for the future is not in any kingdom, including yours. Yeah. The only hope is in the rock. Yeah. The one who brings salvation. Yeah. That's a sermon right there. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's good yeah, yeah. preaching. Yeah. So close this out. What, what, uh, what is the big application that you think that we need to take away? I would probably circle back to that verse, um, verse 28, where it says, but there is a God in heaven who reveals secret. The ultimate secret, and it's really not, in, it's like an open secret. The ultimate secret that God has or solution is Christ. So maybe if you're watching today, maybe you're at a point in your life where you're looking for an answer. You're looking for a solution. Your answer to your specific problem is Christ. And once you draw uh, closer to him, the Bible says that when we draw closer to him, he will draw closer to us. Make that step. Accept Christ into your life. That could be the missing link, the secret that you're looking for. Wow, that's powerful. 
So then what we finally see as you come to the last couple of verses, Daniel had the courage to step up and say, God, he gave God the credit, but he also said, God's going to be the one who has victory over every kingdom. And the king was so pleased. These are words that you would think a king like Nebuchadnezzar would not want to hear. Yeah. Your kingdom's coming to an end. Um, but he was so pleased that God did give Daniel this wisdom and this discernment that he made him the number one ruler in Babylon underneath King Nebuchadnezzar. Yeah. And even then, Daniel had the wisdom to realize, I can't do this by myself. I need help. And he asks for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to come yeah. alongside him. And, and Nebuchadnezzar allows it. And so now he's surrounding himself with some godly men. Yes. They're going to give good godly wisdom. And Babylon prospers because of Daniel's leadership under yeah. this. So it's really phenomenal to see how God uh, causes a guy like Daniel to thrive, even a place like Babylon. And God can do the same thing for every one of our listeners today. Yeah, and that's even another quick point right there. Surround yourself with godly people. Yeah, yeah. 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 And don't think you can do it all yourself. Yeah. You can't. So anyways, that's what we, uh, let's just finish up right there. Yeah. Say, hey, that's what we're going to talk about today in HD Daily. We hope you join us again tomorrow as we continue you in the life of Daniel. Thank you for joining us today. If you enjoyed this podcast, please help us spread the word by liking this episode and sharing it on your social media platforms. Be sure to leave a comment and review and don't forget to give us five stars. When you do, you help us reach even more people who need a daily devotional like HC Daily. If you'd like to hear more from Chris and Jeff, they're both teaching pastors at Heritage Church located in Southeast Michigan. You can get more of their messages by clicking on the Messages tab at heritagechurch.com. Be sure to join us again soon for another episode of HC Daily.